Things are heating up yet again in the AI space. This is going to be a battle for the ages and things might just be hitting their second leg. ChatGPT is supposed to drop in August. I've got some interesting things to talk about. Then I've got two sources and then I have some analysis at the end of this. So uh, if you're interested in uh, AI stuff that is what this video is about. This will be in an AI news playlist here on the channel. So consider checking that out as well. ChatGPT5 seems to be imminent and testers and security already have their hands on the model. So that is worth knowing that it could be that imminent, that it could be something that is right on the precipice of release. And there were rumors after ChatGPT one a gold medal in math that that was what the new model was, but rumors are that that is not GPT-5. Uh, so that possibly even more impressive that we are about to get the next model of what this artificial intelligence is capable of, but this next leg up in uh, GPT-5 is supposed to be what is known as a unified model, meaning that it has the large language model and it has deep reasoning. And if I were the conspiracy theorist, if I were the science fiction writer, I would say that those two things meeting is probably where consciousness begins to emerge. But we have two sources here. Let's get into these. An article titled OpenAI Prepares to Launch GPT-5 in August, The Verge Reports, by Reuters, we get the following. Artificial intelligence pioneer OpenAI plans to launch its chat GPT-5 model as early as August, The Verge reported on Thursday, citing sources familiar with the plans. The new model, which was expected to launch this summer, will be positioned as an AI system that incorporates distinct models and can perform different functions as opposed to just a single AI model. The Microsoft-backed startup's GPT-5 will incorporate its Omni-3 model along with other technologies, CEO Sam Altman has said in, had said in February in a bid to simplify its offerings. The startup ultimately aims to merge the, o the Omni series with GPT series models as it looks to create AI systems that can utilize all available tools and handle a variety of tasks. While GPT-5 looks likely to debut in August, OpenAI's planned release dates often shift to respond to development challenges, server capacity issues, or even rival AI model announcements and leaks, according to the report. Uh, this is true, and we're going to get back to a little bit of that later, but I do think that it is interesting that this rumor is coming on the heels of another rumor that... Sam Altman was disappointed in some of the progress that had happened, uh, that Sam, dis Sam Altman kind of flipped a fuse, flipped a breaker when Grok 4 came out and performed the way that it did. And we might be seeing the exchange of blows from heavyweights here uh, starting to really pick up. It is going to be interesting to see what Google does in response to all of this, the agentic AI is something that is really intriguing to me. And I think that that might be the, that might be the next leg up as far as you have language models. What can they do? Reasoning, what can it do? How big is your cluster? All of these things. I think that the agentic movement is going to be the next big movement in all of this AI stuffs. In another article titled OpenAI's Most Capable AI Model, GPT-5, may be coming in August, sources say new model combines o Omni-3 reasoning with the general GPT capabilities from Ars Technica by Binge Edwards. We get the following. On Thursday, The Verge reported that OpenAI is preparing to launch GPT-5 as early as August, according to sources familiar with the company's plans. The report comes five months after CEO Sam Altman first laid out a roadmap for the next-generation AI model that would unify the company's various AI capabilities. 
OpenAI CEO Sam Altman revealed in a post on X last week that the company plans to release GPT-5 soon. According to The Verge's Tom Warren, Microsoft engineers began preparing server capacity for GPT-5 as early as late May, but testing and development challenges pushed the timeline back. During the, an appearance on Theo Vaughn's podcast this week, Altman demonstrated the model's capabilities by having it answer a question he couldn't. I put the model in this GPT-5, and it answered it. I put the model. I put it in the model, this GPT-5, and it answered it perfectly. Altman said. I don't think he said GPT-5. I don't think that is a direct quote. the The clip I saw had him saying, "I put it into our new model, and it answered it perfectly." Uh, but moving on, Altman said, saying it gave him a weird feeling. That's not all he said to see the AI model answer a question that he couldn't. GPT-5 has been a highly anticipated release since the launch of GPT-4 in March 2023. In fact, we first wrote about rumors of GPT-5's launch in May, March 2024. But it appears that GPT-5 did not materialize last year because the company saved the GPT-5 name for a future release. So you're looking at two years now on the GPT-4 model. The Verge reports that OpenAI made had that OpenAI plans, pardon me, to launch what is now called GPT-5 with many and nano versions available through its API. The main version, which will combine a conventional large language model, LLM, and simulated reasoning, SR model, will be uh, will be available through ChatGPT and OpenAI's API, while the nano version will reportedly only be accessible via the API. References to the GPT Reasoning Alpha 2025-713 have already been spotted on X, with code showing reasoning, high, uh, reasoning effort high in the model configuration. These sightings suggest the model has entered the final testing phases with testers getting their hands on the code and security experts doing red teaming on the model to test vulnerabilities. OpenAI's model lineup. The new model represents OpenAI's attempt to simplify its increasingly complex product lineup. As Altman explained in February, GPT-5 may integrate features from both the company's conventional GPT models and its reasoning-focused omni-series into a single system. I think this is why this is taking so long. I think that this is, and without any technical knowledge of this, how it strikes me is if you go back in Tesla's uh, history just a couple of years, they were working on full self-driving and they were doing it with cameras plus LiDAR. That was cameras that could see the world and LiDAR that was sending basically lasers out into the world to see where things really were. But the problem that Tesla kept having was the two systems would bounce off of each other and would cause problems. So there was no, the overriding function was which of these two things, which of these two sensors do you trust? Do you trust the cameras or do you trust the LiDAR? And Elon Musk and company in, eventually decided to get rid of LiDAR completely under the reasoning that, hey, all cars today are driven by two cameras, the two cameras that you have on your face. Uh, we don't need LiDAR because people aren't driving around right now with shooting LiDAR lasers out of their own heads. They are driving with two cameras, and the Teslas have eight cameras, so they are better equipped to do the driving anyway. The article continues, We are truly excited not to just make a net new Great Frontier model. We're also going to unify our two series. OpenAI's head of developer experience, Romain Huet, said at a recent event. The breakthrough of reasoning in the Omni series and the breakthroughs in multimodality in the GPT series will be unified, and that will be GPT 5. According to the information, GPT-5 is expected to be better at coding and more powerful overall, combining attributes of both traditional models and SR models such as Omni-3. 
Before GPT-5 arrives, OpenAI still has to plan its release and plan to release its first open weights model since GPT-2 in 2019, which means others with the proper hardware will be able to download and run the AI model on their own machines. The Verge describes this model as similar to Omni 3 Mini with reasoning capabilities. However, Altman announced on July 11th that the open model needs additional safety testing, saying we're not sure how long it will take us. Now, a couple more takeaways from this, in my opinion. On that Theo Vaughn podcast, Sam Altman didn't just say that the, oh, that the uh, GPT answered the question that he couldn't understand. He said that it made him feel worthless or something along those lines. I might not have the exact word, but it was something that was meaning Sam Altman felt worthless in light of this. Very, very terrifying for one of the leading, uh, one of the leading minds in artificial intelligence to say that GPT-5, which is potentially coming next month, made him feel worthless. The power of these models, and I have GPT and I have uh, Grok, obviously, and I've used a little bit of the publicly available Google stuff. On some things, they are stunningly concise. On some things, they are not so much. And a lot of this is probably, you know, user errors, right? I prefer to ask broad, open-ended questions to the artificial intelligences because I'm not using them for specific test case scenarios. I run another uh, YouTube channel called Stripped Cover Lit where I talk about literature. And where I'm using most uh, most of the AI right now is asking for suggestions on poems to make videos about, things like that. They, they always suggest this, the same poems. The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost is very popular with artificial intelligence. Uh, but I do think that the if you're adding reasoning to and increasing, increasing reasoning of these models, broad open-ended questions might be the better questions. Right now they say that the more specific you go, the more you drill down in your questions, um, the better answers you get. But I think as agentic AI starts to take off, your AI knowing you, your AI remembering you, these broad open-ended questions, the answers for them will be tailored more closely to what it is that you like. And you might have to actually, so if I were asking, I have, um, I have studied the idea of hauntology a little bit through, uh, artificial intelligence because some of the sources online are really dense and hard to find sometimes. And I will ask about other things and get answers about hauntology. So that is something that I think the agentic movement will possibly remedy in an ironic way, but might in the meantime, that, that, issue might get worse. Uh, So you'll have to ask an open-ended question, get an answer that is sort of specific to you, and then divert the intelligence away from that a little bit. Now, the last thing I want to talk about here, judging from past releases, again, two years, right on uh, GPT-4, and the trends with what it is that ChatGPT does, Judging by the fact that Google, who was for a very long time referred to as a graveyard of ideas, are both stepping on artificial intelligence very hard. I think that there is a forcing function here, and I think I know what it is. I don't think Sam Altman and OpenAI wanted to have GPT out so soon. I think that they were still working on things, but Elon Musk and XAI put out Grok 4, which became a forcing function because XAI came out of nowhere, was very late to the game, and is all of a sudden testing better than all of these other AIs. What we're going to see in the next year, 
in the next year and a half, I think is going to be like a heavyweight fight. And these things have started to move on a bit of a glacial scale, right? Very slow, very methodical, very plodding. Elon Musk refuses to play that game. And there's, it's going to be interesting because I don't think right now the mistakes that artificial intelligence makes will be dangerous. There will be a time, probably in the next few years, where those mistakes will be dangerous. But right now they're not. And that old saying, I think it's from Google, move fast and break things. I think the tech sector is heading back in that direction. And when you have something like artificial intelligence that is not just playing chess, that is not just suggesting songs, that is not just giving you answers for your English exam, but it is getting to the point where artificial intelligence will be teaching artificial intelligence. Things are going to springboard in a massive and possibly terrifying way. That is all I have for this video. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting a like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with others. And if you find yourself here by chance but not designed, this is one of the things I talk about on this channel. So consider hitting the subscribe button to stay around. And as always, I hope to have you back for the next one.